you know, I really don't want to talk about politics, especially now that politics has gotten all Roland Emmerich movie E. Their hateful defiance of his legitimacy is an insult to each of us. He's taken money from foreign governments and threatened to shut down news organizations that report the truth. Every critic, every detractor will have to bow down to President Trump. No, their fate will be failure and they will perish in the political flames of their own fires. This president is a clear and present danger who's mentally unstable and armed with nuclear weapons. Ugh. But, uh, you know, I also want people to watch my channel and I just couldn't help but noticing, oh, oh, oh. And I mean, look at this, this fucking Sean and Jen guy gets thousands of dollars a video to dunk on the laziest, dumbest liars in the history of propaganda. I can do that. So let's talk about Paul, because here's the thing. I haven't actually watched any of Paul's videos. I mean, I didn't need to. I already knew what was the most annoying thing about him. Well, that and the way he gawps at the camera like a drunk, hungry, hungry hippo. So maybe if I do this in longer form, I can get some of that sweet, sweet Patreon money. Soy boys. Is soy food consumption turning men into pussies and making them more likely to adopt left-wing beliefs? As we know, the only men who seriously watch BuzzFeed are tofu-eating, male feminist virtue signaling, beta orbiter, soy boys. Which That's some really sophisticated science journalism you're doing here. Me, you're a pussy because you disagree with me and you only disagree with me because you're a pussy and I'm manly and manly people all agree with me, yeah. The alright seems to have this habit of constantly coming up with new ways to call liberals pussies. First there was beta male, then new male, then bug man, then hipster, the old standby, cuck, snowflake, and now soy boy. I miss the simplicity of the schoolyard when the bully would just call you a faggot and put you in a headlock. But that's too politically incorrect, even for a brave, un-PC Paul Joseph Watson. Now you need a goddamn glossary of terms just to know what you're being accused of. And it just goes on with him reading tweets from people he disagrees with in a chipmunk voice, and then tweets where they say they ate a soy product once. Arthur Chu, the Jeopardy winner who's such a good feminist, he wants to wipe out all men and admits he can't satisfy his wife. He's a soy boy. He's such a soy boy, he thinks Starbucks charging extra for soy milk is racist. You know he's joking, right? Uh, wait, dipping something in soy sauce makes you a soy boy now? Is all of China soy boys? That's the thing, there seems to be an even closer correlation between male feminist virtue signalers who defend Muslim refugees and their soy fetish, despite the fact that the mass importation of people from a society... And now he's off topic ranting about Muslims, great. Alright, so on to the debunking. Let's check his sources. And there are no sources. Shit. Uh, now what? All right, let's try typing in some of his claims. Okay, these all seem to basically come from weird paleo diet food blogs. Oh no, not pasteurized milk. Let's see, we got steroid logic. We got this lady who seems to have accidentally collagened her lips into a perpetual sneer. We have this lady who has a PhD in anti-aging. What is a PhD in anti-aging? Needless to say, Paul just googled soy and estrogen and used the first five links that agreed with whatever he already believed. Basically every legitimate mainstream medical institute says this theory is dumb. For one thing, the hormone that gives you tits is called estradiol, which is different from the phytoestrogen that occurs in soy. Which by the way, also occurs in wheat, and barley, and flax, and mung beans, and apples, and carrots, and rice, and beans, and lentils. Phytoestrogen latches onto the same receptors as estrogen, but it doesn't necessarily activate them the way regular estrogen does. It's like those little plastic plugs they put in outlets to keep babies from killing themselves. You know, it occurs to me that appealing to mainstream medical authorities in response to a bunch of conspiracy theorists is probably a waste of time. I'm, I'm kind of at a loss here since I'm not an endocrinologist or anything. Maybe I, uh... 
Maybe I should just try another video. The new sexual Puritans. We're now witnessing the birth pangs of the sexual reformation. The fallout from the sex abuse scandals that have plagued the entertainment industry, politics, and are now spreading throughout society as a whole, is being hijacked by the far left, cultural Marxists, feminists, and social justice warriors to whip up more misandry and create more gender division. Third wave feminism has been largely discredited over the past five years. Oh Christ, with the third wave feminism. All right, so here's the thing about third wave feminism. It's it's not what they say it is. Most of the really obnoxious stuff you see goes all the way back to the bra burners of the 60s, especially the puritanical anti-sex stuff. And don't think people didn't notice and complain about it then. I mean, Andrew Dorkin literally formed a coalition with the Christian right to stop pornography. And that coalition was the inspiration for the bad guys and A Handmaid's Tale. From what I can tell, the idea of third wave feminism being the bad feminism came from the men's rights movement, and specifically one of their weird old lady hangers on, like Erin Pizzi or Christina Hoff Summers, I'm not sure which. And you know, it's weird because this isn't like an opinion, and it doesn't really affect whether the ideas are right or wrong, it's just factually incorrect. And for the longest time, I didn't understand why they never let it go in the face of bulletproof evidence to the contrary. And listening to Paul, I suddenly understood they need a way to separate themselves from sexist of old without conceding any of the ideas that they completely share with the sexist of old. I mean, the right has been banging on about feminazi since before I was born. They, they needed a label that would separate them from the Pat Robertsons of the world, and so... They had to pick a movement that started after sexism was quote-unquote solved. You know, after Congress passed the ERA and women got equal rights under the law, that thing we all agree happened. And so, third wave feminism, a group of people whose main contribution to activism mostly consists of doctoral theses on the proto-feminist semiotics of Buffy the Vampire Slayer's second season, suddenly had to shoulder the blame for all the worst excesses of their second wave forebears. Alright, what else? Mere accusation alone is enough to ruin someone's career. Do you understand how dangerous that is? Roy Moore has vehemently denied the allegations against him, but to the baying mob, allegations are all that's required to pass judgment. But he didn't deny it, Paul, that's the point. Sean Handy loved him a softball and he whiffed. But you know her, but you never dated her ever. Is that what you're saying? Know her, but I don't remember going out on dates. I, I knew her as a friend. If we did go out on dates, then we did. How we're being told to hyper focus on certain people and not others. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you caught him. Joe Biden pecked that girl on the top of her head. The most sexual type of kiss there is. All right, I think I'm starting to understand the difference between real sexual assault and moral panic. If a Republican's accused, it's a moral panic. If a liberal is accused, it's a real sexual assault. And what pisses me off the most is that these same feminists now hijacking this scandal to legitimize their crusade against straight white men have for years now ignored the fact that we're importing a real rape culture in the form of mass Islamic immigration. A policy that has resulted in women being molested en masse. Oh, for fuck's Europe. sake, does he bring everything back to the fucking Muslims? You know, one of ISIS's stated goals is to eliminate the middle ground. By that they mean the middle ground between being a Muslim and being a Westerner. To create a situation in which the only choices for Muslims is to do and act exactly as they say or abandon their god altogether. Paul sort of acts as a similar centrifuge for white people. Either do nothing about criminals and shitty beliefs among the people who emigrate to Europe and America, or a massive continent-wide eliminationist purge against all Muslims, or maybe all Arabs, or maybe just all third world migrants in general. Uh, it's hard to tell, he's never very specific. I mean, sure, we could house people temporarily and do background checks and divide actual refugees from economic migrants and send the economic migrants back and law enforcement can arrest and either jail or deport people who commit crimes, but no. Apparently not only does the alt-right deny that the government is doing this, even though they are, uh, apparently it's not even possible to do. We just gotta drive every man, woman, and child into the sea. It's that or Western civilization gets destroyed. The French police force got away with raping a dude's butthole with their batons, but 
They're too cocked to stop a teenager from grabbing a white lady's butt. In Cologne, feminists responded to the mass molestation of women by migrants on New Year's Eve 2015 by visiting the local migrant center and handing out roses. Something sinister is happening. Paul, do you think that guy is a rapist? Like, do you think this lady just got her butt grabbed and she turned around and gave the exact same guy a flower? I really don't get why not being racist also means rapes have to happen. You're blaming a collective for the actions of an individual. Wait, where have I heard someone complain about that? All men are not complicit, you collectivist piece of shit. I'm not complicit in Louis C.K. masturbating in front of women. I'm not complicit in Harvey Weinstein groping women. I'm not complicit in Kevin Spacey sexually molesting boys. And neither are all men. The vast majority of men have never done anything like that and never will. Oh, was it in the exact same video 30 seconds later? This feminist just brazenly exploits the whole Me Too hashtag outpouring to demand all men become deranged social justice warriors to make up for it. How dare you use this crisis to push forward your evil SJW agenda by telling people to prioritize kindness. Helen Rosner, you devious cunt. You know, it may seem like a non sequitur, but the bad art stuff and the Muslim stuff actually fits together pretty well. You see, without the big Muslim horde invasion coming to destroy Western civilization, all this silly performance art and activism would be just silly, basically harmless. And Paul needs all this silly activism and performance art to portray Western civilization as too weak to defend itself, to give his viewers the impression that the only choices are the far right or nothing. In Umberto Eco's famous essay about fascism, he noticed that fascists had to commit themselves to two completely contradictory notions. One, that they were always on the verge of losing, and two, they were always on the verge of winning. That they were grossly outnumbered and simultaneously an unstoppable juggernaut. That their enemies were an unyielding hegemon, but also a silly collection of inept morons. I'm not saying Paul's a fascist, but he carries this quality in spades. He's just so blithely assured of his own person, so smarmily confident in his side's power, and yet he's haunted by ghosts of his imagined ideological enemies. He sees them controlling all art, all corporations, all media, fucking apartment buildings. Everywhere you go in London, these hulking monoliths impose their repulsiveness, ruining the harmony of entire townscapes, ghettoizing the environment, forcing people to live in concrete ant heaps. After World War II, radical architects launched a revolution against earlier traditionalist styles, believing they represented colonialism, racism, slavery, and exploitation. It was the revenge of mediocrity upon talent and taste. They were the so social justice warriors of their time, aesthetic terrorists. Why did they design it like this? Why the daunting exterior combined with the expansive, foreboding, shadeless, open space in front? Again, it's about using oppressive brutalism to exert authoritarian control over the population. Le Cabusier was a fucking time-traveling SJW now? Uh, help me. Help, I'm being oppressed by a regular geometry on a building. I've watched a bunch of his videos now, and it's like being trapped in a room with a man who's rapidly cycling between manic and depressive episodes. He jumps from delusions of grandeur to delusions of persecution in the span of seconds. And it's all over fat chicks with colored hair doing bad performance art and tofu. And he clearly doesn't even believe half this shit. Every morning before I start writing or shooting a video, I take two capsules of brain force for a sustainable burst of energy. This is, without question, the most powerful nootropic I've ever taken, and it comes without any of the crashes or the jitters associated with energy drinks. It's added. The apotheosis of this is his video on the far right being the new counterculture. We are so weak and they're so powerful, but we are unstoppable and we will overthrow you and take over the culture. You know, I hope he's right. I hope they do win over the culture, because then they can learn what liberals have known for 50 years. The culture isn't worth a bucket of cold piss. The past 50 years, 
pretty much every union has been decimated. Schools are more racially segregated than they were in Nixon's day. Rich billionaire investors become richer and richer while wages go down. We're sleepwalking into a fucking shadow run cyberpunk dystopia and what do we have to show for all our control of the media? Gay marriage and Moonlight got an Oscar. But all Paul knows for sure is the world is filled with things he doesn't understand and it terrifies him and it must be someone else's fault. If you go through his archives, about a third of his videos are about how modern culture was deliberately built by a mysterious them with the purpose of enslaving us. Now Paul's fans will tell you that even though Paul works with Alex Jones, he doesn't go for the nutty conspiracy theory stuff. And that's true, but only starting in about 2015 when in the aftermath of Gamergate, he realizes there's an untapped market for mainstream social conservatism. Before that, he was a full-blown Illuminati guy. Bilderberg 2015. Did Jay-Z host Eyes Wide Shut Illuminati Party? ISIS fake Jordanian pilot burning video. Putin threatens to reveal bombshell 9-11 evidence. Some see mysterious truck convoy as government takeover. Ebola could go airborne, kill millions. Is the Steven Sotloff beheading video fake? The MH17 cover-up. Did Israel collude with ISIS to justify Gaza attack? World leaders wear bizarre Illuminati pyramid at summit. JFK, the official conspiracy theory. Bizarre mind control caught on camera? Kill a family member to join the Illuminati. Is Edward Snowden a double agent? Kim Kardashian naming new baby after the Illuminati? Did US cancer weapon kill Hugo Chavez? Shock studies suggest we're all living in the matrix. Raw milk rights under siege. <laughs> and Kesha, my vagina is haunted. Her talent obviously doesn't stem from her good looks. What it apparently does stem from is what she admitted in one of her songs, that she sold her soul to Satan. And then responding to her videos where she's wearing a, an upside down pentagram and all kinds of other Illuminati symbolism, she now says that she's really the leader of the Illuminati and I couldn't think of a better candidate. And remember, this is who your kids are listening to. This is who they look up to. This is their influence, their icon. And apparently one of the outcomes of her selling her soul to the devil is that now, according to an interview with Rolling Stone, her vagina is haunted. So apparently Kesha had sex with a ghost, then went to a healer who performed an exorcism on her vagina and started speaking in a bizarre language and making all kinds of crazy noises. This is one of the most successful pop stars that your children are listening to today. Oh my god, Paul, they're jokes. These are just jokes. Vagina ghosts aren't real. But even now, he really hasn't changed that much. He basically makes the exact same videos as he did then, but the new them is cultural Marxists instead of the NWO or the Illuminati. Cultural Marxists, of course, not just being the Frankfurt School, but also all practitioners of modern and postmodern art, all branches of postmodern philosophy, the civil rights movement, women's lib, gay lib, and their respective academic communities, all modern commercial pop culture, and even the fucking architects are in on it, apparently. He, of course, makes exceptions for things he likes. Maladjustment is now trendy. And not in a kind of Morrissey, emo, grunge-esque, chic kind of way. And heaven knows I'm miserable now. We've always had that. Young people were once able to channel their self-loathing, their anger, through the medium of rebellious music. Think punk, grunge, goth. Now, they're all growing up listening to sterile drivel like One Direction and Maroon 5. Marilyn Manson is fine, but Kesha and those vagina ghosts go too far. Right now, the President of the United States is poised to pass a tax plan that will simultaneously impoverish every grad student, both STEM and liberal arts. It will raise the deficit, raise taxes on half the middle and working classes. Also, he can cut corporate taxes in half and abolish the estate tax, a tax you only pay if you have a net worth of 10 million or more. On top of that, the FCC is planning to end net neutrality. A massive oil spill has occurred in North Dakota from a pipeline he approved. He still has plenty of opportunities to kick millions of people off their health care. 
With his blessing, Saudi Arabia is in the process of escalating a bloody strategic bombing campaign against Yemeni citizens. A coercive economic stranglehold on Qatar, with the explicit aim of getting rid of free media in the Arab world, and has kidnapped the Prime Minister of Lebanon with seemingly no purpose at all, except maybe to start a second civil war there too. He's engaged in nuclear brinksmanship with two different countries, as far as I can tell, on a whim. And Paul... Paul wants you to worry about campus gender queers and soy milk. You know, I don't usually go for the things were better in the olden days, blah 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 thing, but I have to say this. In ancient Rome, when the emperor needed to distract people from what a shitty job he was doing, he would give people bread and circuses. Real fresh bread, and you got to watch something awesome like Russell Crowe gutting a Christian or something. Now all we get is Brain Force Plus and this fucker.